Well, good morning. Welcome to another week of the video worship service here on the Park Avenue channel. I apologize about not having a video for last week. I will put that video up on um, the, the channel uh, for various reasons. Primarily, uh, I had software malfunctions going on, so I could not edit the video and therefore I couldn't upload it or do anything with it. And so, my apologies. But this week is Father's Day. And in keeping with that, as I spoke about mothers on Mother's Day, only fair to put the fathers in the sights today. We will have, with our worship today, some singing, a lesson, and some communion time around the table. Sit back and let's have some singing. Good morning, church. Welcome, and happy Father's Day. You know, today, our world, the roles and, and mothers and fathers is equally important, but their qualities are totally different. One of the downsides of today's world is this new reality that we live in this, an idea of sexual neutrality. In the fact, there's uh, 
virtually no difference makes no never mind what you want to be men and women are different God created us that way in fact uh, in the first few chapters of Genesis God tells us in some uh, different ways how that we are different and how our duties will look different even though our goals as mothers and fathers are equally the same our roles will be different and we will be different as we love and train the children you know a few years back uh, multiple fights had, take, had taken place at the Southwood High School in Shreveport Louisiana Louisiana and it resulted in the arrest of 23 students a group of about 40 dads stepped up and decided they needed to put a stop to the violence known as dads on duty the men worked shifts so there were always several fathers on campus from the time students first arrive to when they go home the dads are there to lift up the spirits tell jokes dole out advice and just let the kids know there's someone looking out for them additionally watching them Michael LaFette said he started dads on duty because we decided the best people who can take care of kids are us since the group formed there have been no fights on campus with one student explaining the school has just been happy and you can feel it dads on duty will have a permanent president presence at Southwood High and the group would like to see other chapters from across the country you know it's not to say that moms aren't important we know how important moms are but I'm afraid in our present society we have lost the emphasis and importance on dads one of my favorite lines from the movie Robert Rufford played in from The Natural he says to Glenn Close in one of their scenes you know dads make all the difference and I know dads make the difference. You can look at prison uh, statistics. 80 to 90 percent of those incarcerated either had no father figure present or they just had no father at all in their lives. One of the roles of fathers to protect, and here recently, at a Cincinnati Reds baseball game, a Cincinnati Reds baseball fan, Jacob Kinsley, recently told reporters, as a dad, you have to always be ready to expect the unexpected and be ready for anything that could be flying out. On April 16th, this past year, Jacob and his wife took their 11 month old son, Shepard, to his first Cincinnati Reds ball game. Jacob told his wife before the game he would protect their son if a foul ball came close to their seats, which was located just 15 rows from the field. Miss Kingsley said she was anxious about the ball hitting her son and told her husband to be on constant lookout for foul balls. She said the entire game I was like, are you watching? Are you watching? Then a foul ball actually zoomed in their direction. Shepard was strapped in his father's chest in a baby carrier and was enjoying a bottle when a foul ball popped off the protective net and headed in their direction. When I saw the ball, I was like, okay, this is my time, Jacob said in an interview. i got to step up. The ball continued flying in, in his direction of Jacob and who was using his left hand to feed his son in a bottle. His right hand, however, was free. He just, it was just coming right towards me, and I was like, I can't not try to catch it, said the 26-year-old resident. So I just reached my hand out. There it was, and, and anybody right next to me, and I made the catch. People on social media praised Jacob for his deft catch. Bottle didn't even come out. Legend, one user tweeted, another side, highlights of the red season, so far, red season so far. You know, fathers by design are always, and should be always, 
on the lookout for trouble. I've often felt my strongest duty as a father was to protect my children and maybe all children who are in my general vicinity. It is one of the important duties we have as fathers and it's factually probably the very first one we recognize. Because as small children, we don't do a lot of and not involved as much as the mother in the beginning. The mother is the nurturer, the feeder. Not to say that fathers can't feed and change diapers and do all that kind of stuff, but moms tend to do it more. But men, in the beginning, are just always on the lookout, looking for trouble, making sure that they have it under control. And we want our fathers to be the men that God created them to be. Men who stand firm and stand in the gap of danger. Much like that group of fathers who started patrolling a school grounds, protecting the children. We don't let society dictate our behavior. Be the protectors that God called you to be. Secondly, we need to instruct and teach. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4, Paul writes, Father, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in training and instruction of the Lord. Exasperate is a Maybe a difficult word, but I think we got a good meaning of it. What it means is don't frustrate or confuse your child. Well, how would you do that? Well, one, first of all, <laughs> just not being that real good father. Because if all you're doing is berating and putting a child down, you're not going to get, you're not going to be the father God called you to be. But secondly, do not tell your child to do something that is not something you're doing. As fathers, children are watching you. Children are making sure you're doing what you say you that you're requiring them to do. Live the life that you're asking your child to live. Thirdly, our role is to acknowledge and approve our child. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 17, we've got this when Jesus is just being baptized and a voice from heaven said, This is my Son whom I love. With, with Him I am well pleased. Later in Matthew in chapter 17, verse 5, when Jesus is transfigured before Peter, James, and John, this is what happens. While He was still speaking, a brown cloud covered them and a voice from the cloud said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. We need to acknowledge how much our children mean to us, how pleased we are with them, and how our respect toward them is absolute. Now, I know there are going to be times that your children are going to do things that you're not going to like. That's just going to happen. But you don't berate and belittle a child for those very reasons. What you do is you lovingly teach them. You know, I love you, but that behavior is not acceptable. And whatever means you feel necessary to correct the actions, then deal with it. But as fathers, don't exasperate your children. Bring them up a training and instruction of the Lord. Give emphasis to why and what you are doing. It will make a lasting impression. It will make the difference to your child when, you're, when you acknowledge and you acknowledge them and explain to them how you love them and how this is your relationship with them. Our last one we're going to be talking about today is blessing your children. Now, this attribute has kind of got lost. It was an extremely strong Jewish tradition and it didn't quite transfer over into the modern society. In fact, it has not been one of the attributes I've been very good at either. 
But God, in His love and devotion toward His creation and His children, has always blessed His children. You know, God is our role model as a father. So we should act accordingly in like Him. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 22, God has just created Adam and Eve, and God said, God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the water and the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. God immediately blessed His children. In 1 Chronicles 23, verse 13, we have the story about Aaron and, and the idea of what the priests were called to do. And this is what the writer of Chronicles says. Aaron was set apart. He is he and his descendants forever to consecrate the most holy things, to offer sacrifices before the Lord, to minister before Him, and to pronounce blessings in His name forever. In fact, in Numbers chapter 6, the Lord says to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. This blessing this, that it is said with words and emotions and as a state of fact is something every child needs. You need it. I need it. Our children need it. We need it from God. We only function in the understanding that we're being blessed by our Father. This is important for all of us to do. It is absolutely necessary for fathers to do. And it is truly, I honestly believe now, one of our greatest responsibilities. The New Testament is loaded with various blessings that Paul and some of the other writers put forth. In Romans chapter 15, verses 5 through 6, this is what Paul says. As a blessing, may the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Later down in thir verse 13 he says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Later in 2 Corinthians, Paul writes, chapter 13, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May He strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all His Holy One. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 and 24, Paul writes, May God Himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The One who calls you is faithful and He will do it. Last one, in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20-21, through 21, the Hebrew writer states, Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from, our dead, brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing His will, and may He work in us what is pleasing to Him through Jesus Christ. To Him be glory forever and ever. Amen. As fathers, we have more than four duties, but I've highlighted four that I find very important. To protect, to instruct and teach, to acknowledge, and to bless. These are not all that we do as fathers. 
But these are the attributes of God which really should teach us as fathers how to act toward others and especially to our children. To grow up with a father and especially a good father, you know it makes all the difference in a child's life. So, fathers, let's be that difference. Let's be the difference. God bless. I'll see you in a few minutes as we surround the table. son of Kenneth Mitchell, I never worried about being protected, instructed and teaches, acknowledged and blessed. But I also never worry about it as a child being provided for. Now I know that's an important role of fa as fathers and I think if a father does the other four things, uh, he'll do the providing. I always knew when I went to the table there was going to be something to eat. My dad would make sure of it. Someone else may. He may not eat, but the children were. God, in His infinite wisdom, knew we needed to be provided for. That we needed to be rescued and we needed to be saved. And so, we surround this table as His children give thanks to the Father and to His Son whom He asked to step in and take our punishment. And He did. Our brother and our King, Jesus Christ, did this. It is hard to actually, honestly, to even begin to imagine offering up a child for someone you don't really know. But imagine God offering up His Son to people who are even His enemies, as Paul writes in Romans. So we come to this table to partake of this bread which represents His broken and offered up body. And this cup which represents His blood which was a price demanded because of sin. 
you and I will take this time and be reminded of the love of the Father and the love of the Son lest we ever forget. Would you bow with me, please? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, we approach your throne of grace and mercy surrounded by these witnesses of just how marvelous and how wonderful you have been. What a Father you have offered yourself to be to your children and to our Savior, Jesus Christ, who paid a debt that we could not pay. Father, may we give him the honor and glory he deserves for his sacrifice and his love for us and you. And Father, may we never forget the provision which you've made possible for us. And Father, may we never take it for granted. May we always be devoted to you, our Father. Through the power of your resurrected Son, do we pray. And amen. Well, God bless. Have a great day. Have a happy Father's Day. And have a great week. And hopefully I'll see you again next Sunday. Have a great day. Thank you.